Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Memory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Sitting next to our director of high school scouting, Cornell Hunter, and today he's unveiling the 2012 Football Game Plan preseason high school All-American team. Now, Cornell, at Football Game Plan, we do things differently. Tell everyone how you came about your rating system for the guys that were able to make this team. Well, what we try to do is uh, rate the prospects on attributes that are specific to their position. So uh, we don't just come up with blanket ratings. We have point scales. Everything is based on a 100-point value, and we grade the prospects out like that. And uh, for example, the first rating we look at for the quarterback would be pocket awareness. Is that quarterback willing to stand in the pocket even though pressure is on his way and he sees the blitz coming? Now, there's one guy down in Marietta, Georgia, that does a great job of doing all those things. Talk a little bit about Anthony Jennings and what he brings to the table. Anthony Jennings, when you put on this kid's tape, is very impressive. He has the ability to run, but he's a much better thrower than he is a runner. The guy has an accurate release, I mean a quick release. The ball is always accurate, and the best thing that I like about him is that even though he can run, he uses his feet to set up his passes. He moves well within the pocket. Running is always his last resort, and I love to see that out of a quarterback. Yeah, you got to leave the running to the running backs. And speaking of the running backs, you look at a guy whose last name may sound familiar to some. Tell us about Kelvin Taylor and what, who's his dad and where is he coming from? Well, Kelvin Taylor is a kid out of Belle Glades, Florida, who I really enjoy watching on film. He's the son of former Florida running back Fred Taylor. This kid is a bit shorter than his dad. He's 5'10", but he's he's 216 pounds and he has wiggle and jiggle. When I watch this kid, he can make you miss, he can bowl through you. Very similar to his dad. I'm very impressed with this young Taylor kid. Now we gotta go all the way out to the Pacific Northwest to get the next back, Tyner. Explain a little bit about Thomas Tyner out of Oregon. And uh, Thomas Tyner is one of those kids who I say, he just looks like a running back. When he steps off the bus, you know that that's the team's running back. Right. When, you, when, he hang, when he gets the ball, the kid has speed, agility, he runs downhill, he's not playing in a spread offense, so you know, you get to see some real life running back vision, which I like to see because nowadays with the spread, right. it's hard to judge that, but this kid is a running back seven days a week. I really love Thomas Tyner. And when you run the football, it opens up things outside to throw the football. Let's talk about some receivers now. You look down in Sealy, Texas. Last guy out of Sealy, Texas of note, Eric Dickerson. How did this guy make the list and make you almost want to say forget about Dickerson. Well, I really love this Ricky Seals Jones kid. This kid is a freak of an athlete. Whatever campus he steps onto next fall, he's going to threaten someone's playing time. The kid is six foot five, 225 pounds. He can play receiver, safety, running back. Last year, as a matter of fact, he played quarterback, but they had him run in the shotgun draw, mm -hmm. put him in positions where he can make a lot of plays. But uh, at the collegiate level, they're looking at him as a receiver. He has great hands, great abilities. He's a huge kid, 6'5", 230, and he's just a junior in high school. Going into his senior going year. Going into his senior year, so he's going to be dangerous. Well, let's travel up to the uh, Northeast. You got a guy out of Manica, Pennsylvania, Robert Foster, do everything type of guy. Talk about Foster, what he brings to the table. Well, Robert Foster is a receiver who would also make this All-American team as a punt returner. This kid is electric with the ball. He can make you miss. He can stop on a dime. He's one of those kids who doesn't lose speed when he's trying to make moves on the, on the go, so he can cut from any angle on the field. He's very natural catching the ball. The, uh, I mean, he's just hard to bring down. When you watch his tape, it's like you're watching, you're watching something special. This kid can make you miss. And none of these specialists, receivers, running backs, can get anything done if it's not for the guys up front. Let's go out to the Midwest, Wheaton, Illinois. The last person from Wheaton, Illinois of no Red Green one of the best college running backs of all time. Let's talk about Kyle Bosch, guy out of Wheaton, Illinois. Well, Kyle Bosch plays angry. He's one of those linemen that needs to be on the defensive line. When you put on his high school tape, it's almost as if he's angry that someone chose to line up in front of him. <laughs> he dominates his man every time. And I want to stay in Illinois because there's two kids out of Illinois. Mm -hmm. There's another kid, Ethan Pokett from uh, Lamont, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And he's another kid, but he's more tall, he's very lean, has good balance, long arms. He's going to be a great one at the next level as well. So out in the Midwest, yeah, some, so, some good prospects yes. on the offensive line. Now, you know there's some good prospects down in the south. Let's start in Texas, Selena, Texas. Talk about a guy named Jake Rawlson. What do you bring to the table? Hey, this kid, and I say this, when I break down his film, 
he's the most technically sound blocker that I've seen. Mm -hmm. The only thing is he's not the biggest guy, but he has the leg drive that coaches dream about. He always attacks his man. He gets in the center of the chest. He drives his man wherever he wants to go. So Jake Rollison, I would, I see him as a great center at the next level. And you look at Josh Boot out of Boot, Louisiana. It's interesting how he has the same last name as the town. Uh, but why did he make this ball club? Boot is just, he's a, he's a monster. He's a guy that is beastly strong. Mm -hmm. And when you grade him out on film, I like to see how well linemen use their hands. But this is a guy who's so strong that on the point of impact, he just knocks people over. Mm -hmm. So on the next level, that's something he'll have to work at, but he has good feet, he moves well. They use him a lot on pulling plays or whatnot. Josh Booth is an angry kid. He punishes anyone who steps in front of him. Now down in Lake City, Florida, you have a guy in Laramie Tunsil. What is special about Tunsil? Because he's been getting a lot of buzz as a late. Well, this is the thing that people like about Tunsil. He's an NFL coach's dream. The kid is lean, tall. When he stands up, his hands can touch his knees. Mm -hmm. He has very long arms. He's good with his feet. You put on his tape, you can tell that he's not struggling to move. He's comfortable in space. So this is a kid that has offers from everywhere. Laramie Tunzo is probably the best offensive lineman prospect in the country at this point. Now you look at an athletic offensive lineman, i.e. the tight end position, that's what we used to call it. But the tight end position, you look at O.J. Howard out of Ottawa, Alabama. What's so special about him? Well, O.J. Howard is very special because he has hands. Now, when you look at the tight end position, most people want somebody who's big and can block and someone who can fight it out in the trenches. But O.J. Howard has the size. You don't see much of him blocking because he's so athletic that they put him, spread him out wide. They also use him, you know, sometimes in the tight formation. But O.J. Howard is a great prospect because once he catches the ball, he isn't a blazer, but he has top flight agility. So for a tight end, to have that type of agility, it really speaks volumes. After he catches the ball, he's a danger once he catches the ball. And we know special teams is vital in any part of football. Let's talk about the kicker, Harrison Butker out of Atlanta, Georgia. Rarely do you see a kicker coming out of, a, of hey. a major city, but this guy is special. Harrison Butker has a leg out of this world. This kid can kick it from distance. He's a great kickoff specialist. I've seen highlights of him in high school kicking the ball out of the back of the end zone. He kicks touch, touchbacks. He's very accurate when he's kicking his field goals. So Harrison Butker will make this. He's, he's the kicker on the uh, football game plan All-American team. And that's Browns out of our offensive side of the football. So let's go ahead and take a look at the defense to sign the football of this All-American team. Now here are the guys that made the second team of our high school All-American list. Which guy stands out to you the most? I think quarterback Max Brown stands out a bit because this guy has great field awareness. When you watch his tape, you can tell that he knows where every receiver should be. James Quick out of Louisville, Kentucky is a guy with blazing speed. And Tyron Thomas from Marietta, Georgia is a back. When you put on his tape, it's uh, very impressive. The guy has breakaway ability and can make people miss. And the receiver that stands out the most is Derek Griffin. You have a kid that's 6'7", and he catches everything within his radius. He doesn't ma It doesn't matter if he's covered covered by one player or two, he jumps up and catches it with the ball at the highest point. And once again, we have some nasty old linemen, some from the Midwest, one from Colorado, and uh, we finished that off with Ty Cummings, the kicker out of South Lake, Texas.